One final example. When a rocket is two kilometers high, so here's my rocket up here. I'm going to call that two kilometers. It is moving vertically upward at a speed of. I like to call vertical things y. I like to call the change in y with respect to time dy dt. That is in the positive y direction going upward. At that instant, how fast is the angle of elevation? Whoa. Angle of elevation increasing as seen by an observer on the ground. Here's my observer, five kilometers from the launching pad. So this is a little bit different. There's theta. Yes, I'm in a right triangle. That's good. But I'm not going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to use trigonometry. I have, we'll call this x. I have information on the opposite side and the adjacent side to my angle measure theta. So I'm thinking tangent. The relationship between the players here, theta, x, and y, is that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Now let's see if any of those variables are going to remain constant. If they are, I can substitute in right now before I take my derivative. I wouldn't have to, but the derivative of a constant is zero. So we might as well go ahead. And I don't see this distance changing. That rocket is traveling straight up. I see y changing. I see theta changing. I don't see x changing. So I am going to help myself out right there. Now the next step is to take the derivative, but with respect to time. There is the derivative of the outside not changing the inside. Here is times the derivative of what's inside. I'm going to pop my constant coefficient out front. Take the derivative of the term on the right with respect to time. So there we are. And I want to solve for d theta dt. What I'm going to need is a theta measure. There's one variable. And dy dt. They gave me dy dt. So theta is what I need to solve for. I'm going to find what that is and square it. And let me tell you something else I'm going to do. I'm going to turn secant into 1 over cosine because that's what my calculator is going to want me to do. And I have a sneaking suspicion I'm not going to get an exact value. This is probably going to have to be a calculator problem. So I need theta. I'm going to go back up here. And I know that y is 2 and x is 5. The tangent of theta is 2 fifths. So I'm going to get my calculator. And I'm going to find a radian measure for theta. And remember from trigonometry, we generally find that angle measure. We get a decimal approximation in radians. And we list four decimal places. So 2 fifths. Help me remember 2 fifths. We want the tangent inverse. First of all, I guess I should check my mode. Definitely in radian mode. So I want the tangent inverse of 2 divided by 5, 0.3805. So this is 
0.3805. Now I'm going to bring my calculator back up and I want 1 over the cosine of that value and then I want that squared. So I'm going to make good use of parentheses. Open parentheses, 1 divided by, open parentheses again. I want the cosine of 0 0.3805, close parentheses, close parentheses again, and I want that squared. That gives me 1.3805. 159 or 1.160 that would be equivalent multiply that times d theta dt that's going to have to equal 60 solve for d theta dt which is 60 divided by bring my calculator back up, 60 divided by 1 1.1601, 51.7241, 51.7241, 7241. So there we are. There is the rate at which our angle is changing since it's an angle measure. I know we normally give things to three decimal places, but from trigonometry, if you'll remember, we usually give four decimal places in our radians. Now let's talk about units. This is not kilometers. We don't measure, angle measure, in kilometers. We do it in degrees or radians. Everything I did was in radians but it is with respect to time. So this is radians per hour. And it is a positive value. That's awesome. So at the instant, how fast is the angle of elevation of the rocket increasing? In words, the angle of elevation is increasing at a rate of 51.7241 radians per hour. It's a lot of radians. All right, there we go. Four new examples continuing our work on related rates. These examples a little more complicated than the examples I went through for yesterday's lesson, but you can see that the process is still the same. Draw a picture, label all the players intelligently Make sure you keep up with your units. Find a relationship between all the variables that are at play in the setup of your problem. Implicitly differentiate that relationship correctly using excellent calculus, always with respect to time. Figure out which variable you are solving for and find a way to find the value of all other variables in your derivative function. Then use excellent algebra and solve for that one variable. Finally, remember, this is a word problem. The answer should be a sentence. Come to class next time. We'll work more related rates problems.